What's going on, 5.9 Gaming crew? Letha went up here, and guys, welcome back to another 5.9 Gaming Weekly Wrap, this series where we go ahead and we talk about the gaming news that just happened this past week. I pick out a couple, and again, like I said, we talk about it. So for this week specifically, I have four pieces of news to talk about on the agenda, along with some games that released this past week, and one I want you to look out for next week. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into that. Again, I get my listing from Game Informer. If you want the full listing, go to Game Informer to see what dropped this last week. But here's a couple. We had Back for Blood that dropped on the PlayStation 5, Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. That was October 12th. We had Ori the Collection on Switch, October 12th. Demon Slayer finally dropped. And again, that's on multiple platforms, October 15th. And then Crisis Remastered Trilogy, same thing, multiple platforms on October 15th. Now let's go ahead and jump into the very first story, and that's gonna be PlayStation celebrates its fifth anniversary of PlayStation VR, which I have to say, I didn't realize five years already passed since they pretty much you know, debuted and dropped the PlayStation VR, which is pretty cool. So uh, this is coming from the PlayStation blog from Isabel Tomatis, and we're gonna go ahead and read the intro because it was a cool little like, hey, they're just happy with what they did and happy with what they've accomplished. So basically it intros like this. Today marks the fifth anniversary of the day PlayStation VR was introduced to the world. And we want to take this moment to thank all of our fans and our talented development community for embracing this platform and supporting PlayStation VR through the years. It's amazing to see how virtual reality has been established itself in the past five years as a platform for gaming, and we're pleased to have the PlayStation VR play a big role in VR's growth. And I think that last part right there, PlayStation VR uh, played a big role in VR's growth. I have to agree with that because I think a lot of people kind of forget that, especially VR, right, it was a more predominantly PC thing in the very early stages of it. And so you remember, not a lot of people have PCs. Mostly people have our consoles, PlayStation, if anything. And so what I think when PlayStation dropped their own version of a, of a VR console or a VR system, that was so much more accessible to people that they jumped on that, right, before they would ever look at something for PC, which, by the way, you know, a lot of uh, P a lot of VR um, consoles or equipment has got so advanced nowadays where you don't even need a PC anymore. I think looking at like some of the quest lines, you don't even need a PC anymore because we've gone so far. Um, but I would say in the early days of VR, I would definitely think that PlayStation helped with the PlayStation VR and getting people into it, loving it, and then being like, man, I think the PlayStation VR is cool. It might be a little bit limited. And so now I'm going to go ahead and, you know, jump to the next big thing. So again, shout out to PlayStation. I'm, I'm really glad to see them jump into something like PlayStation vr when they did because there was a lot of talk at the time when xbox had the connect and i was a big fan of that until they you know discontinued it which is totally fine but it was cool to see like xbox was doing something like totally different right and i thought that was really cool so it was really nice that playstation not only did that but they stayed with it and now they're continuing with it because you know we're gonna get the playstation vr too so i think it's a really cool thing to see especially them acknowledging it and then just being happy of the, that achievement uh they also went on to say that starting in november PlayStation Plus members will get three PlayStation VR bonus games for no extra charge with more details to come. Pretty cool. I don't have a PlayStation VR. I said it before. I, I want to get one, but I think at this point, I'm going to wait until the PlayStation VR 2. It just makes the most sense. Um, but again, uh, if you have a PlayStation Plus account, make sure you redeem these games because typically that's what I do. So that the day that I do finally get my PlayStation VR, you know, we'll have access to these games. So that's going to be cool. We're going to be getting three bonus games. And then jumping down, they said that more than 500 games and experiences are available on the PlayStation VR. And then they put down most played PlayStation VR games globally. They have down Rec Room, Beat Saber, PlayStation VR Worlds, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim VR, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, and then they promised a bunch more games coming uh, to the PlayStation VR like Moss 2, Zenith The Last City, and a bunch more. Uh, honestly, this just gets me excited for the PlayStation VR 2 at this point. Um, the fact that PlayStation, as we already know, uh, you know, they're coming out with the PlayStation VR 2, but more importantly, they want to take it so much more serious, and with that, they want to start tying in some of their more well-known first-party games like God of War, Horizon. We start seeing some cool VR spin-offs. That's what I want it to be is a spin-off. I don't want them to take any main core story element and make sure it's in a VR game, which I hope they don't do. I don't think they will do it. Um, but I, it's cool just to see that they want to go with so much more in depth uh, with PlayStation VR, right? More than just exp experiences, but they want to get some really cool games on there. So again, shout out to PlayStation. I'm glad that they're uh, really pushing uh, the PlayStation VR. Let's go ahead now and jump into story number two. 
And this is the one that I did drop a video just recently. Go check out the Five Nine Gaming Direct channel. But we did drop a more kind of in-depth, more conversational piece with the expansion pack for the Nintendo Switch Online service. This is store number two. Uh, it got its official date and its official pricing released. Uh, again, go check out that video for a more uh, in-depth look at it. But essentially, in a quick little overview, they dropped a, an overview video, an announcement that talked about, again, what services are you going to be getting right with this expansion pack. Uh, pretty much it's going to offer you N64 games, Sega Genesis games, um, which also they added in there that Sega Genesis will be getting updated, which I didn't know that last time. So it's cool to see that they're promising the fact that, hey, Sega Genesis will be getting also more games just like N64. So cool to see that. But when we get to that price point, that's the part where it's like, I don't know if it's even worth it. Um, but one of the bigger pieces of news that got announced was that the new Animal Crossing uh, New Horizon DLC, Happy Home Paradise, is going to be included into the expansion pack, which that alone has sparked up quite the debate, um, which we'll get into it just a little bit later here. Um, but it says uh, pretty much that's what's going to be added with the expansion pack altogether with the release date of October 25th, 2021, and the official pricing $50 a year, and this is the US price model. Uh, so it's $50 a year, and that's for the individual. And then for the family value, it's $80 a year, which is a pretty, pretty big jump. Um, again, looking at the individual, uh, it's $20 a year for just the base model that comes with what the NES, the SNES, and pretty much just to be able to play games online. $30 more, which is a big jump, right? I mean, we're talking more than double more than double uh, to get access to N64 games and Sega Genesis games. And if you're just that lucky Animal Crossing fan that doesn't have that DLC, well, you get it a part of the expansion pack, which someone like myself, I don't have Animal Crossing. I don't play Animal Crossing. I, I'm forced to, I guess, pay for it because even though it's it, it, the thing is, there's no option to take that off. And I think that's where a lot of people are kind of pissed off because it's like there's no option to remove the Animal Crossing because I don't want to pay for that if I don't have the game. And they're not, at this time at least, they're not offering anything you know else besides the fact that, hey, $50 a year and you get these three things. So I think uh, you know this is where a lot of the controversy is right now. I can tell you right now, majority of the people that I know are super against this. Some people are justifying it. Um, but at the end of the day, you're just getting access, I believe, to just older games, which should not equate a price that's basically $10 less than the offering that you're getting from PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Games with Gold, which also give you about, what, two to three games consistently every month. And they're pretty much, some of them are, like, at least for the PlayStation side, a lot of those games are almost like pretty current games. I mean, just recently there was Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Remake on PlayStation Plus, uh, you know, and their offerings are typically really good games. I mean, they've even done day and date PlayStation 5 games, right? Not saying they're the best, like Destruction All-Stars, um, but the point is, it's not older, not just older games sometimes. Sometimes there's a lot of good current up-to-date games. Whereas Nintendo Switch Online, you have... I talked about it in the video, which I don't want to go into in depth with here, but they've had like game trials where you can play a game for a week for free at a designated week time. Like it's not even like you get to say here this month, you get to play this game, choose a week to, you know, start it up and play it. Boom. No, you from October, what 13th to like October 19th, you can play this game for the whole week. So that's like what Nintendo Switch kind of currently offers. But the point is, when you look at what PlayStation Plus is doing and Xbox Live games are gold, that's crazy to think that uh, Nintendo wants to offer, you know, a new service for some of these older games for $10 less. And they don't even have a full, like, online service package in comparison to the other ones. And I mentioned it before, but, like, I think one of the big ones people want to see is they're tired of having that Nintendo Switch app for party chats. At this point, either you do it with the Switch 2, or if it's possible with an update, I don't know how that works, but add the ability for party chats, even just text chats on the actual Nintendo Switch hardware. So I don't know, either way, let us know down below. I said it in my last video, but uh, you guys let me know also in the comment section, your thoughts, but more importantly, how do they fix this? Or what do you think they can do to justify this price, right? Uh, let us know down below in the comment section, because I, I always feel like that's an important piece. I would hope to think that Nintendo sees all this feedback and hopefully makes a change. Nintendo wouldn't always do that, but I mean, I don't know. You know, we're, we're at a time where companies are trying to be more transparent, and so we'll see. I mean, they've been typically out of uh, touch with their consumer base, but let us know down below in the comment section about that. 
Let's jump into story number three, and that's the DC Phantom Event. It sheds more info on the upcoming Suicide Squad and Gotham Knights game. Uh, both those games, I'm actually pretty excited for. Gotham Knights was the one that I was really excited for. Suicide Squad, however, it's starting to be the game that I'm actually really, uh, you know, slowly getting more excited for. Now, again, this is coming from the DC Phantom Event that just happened on Saturday. Basically, Suicide Squad got a brand new trailer, not only showing off more of the Suicide Squad game, but also more of the Justice League members that look honestly really cool, but they're actually going to be the antagonists of the game. And so you get to see more of that with no specific release date, but a promise that 2022 will be the release for this game. Um, but it does make even myself and a bunch of people wonder, where are they in a the development cycle for this game? Because we still haven't seen any gameplay, and that's a, it's a pretty big thing since we saw this last year and this year still no gameplay unless they have plans at a later date maybe at the video game awards uh, to possibly show more of this game but we'll have to see jumping into gotham knights also got a brand new trailer this time showing off a little bit more of penguin the court of owls along with again showing more nightwing batwoman robin and red hood and they did a cool little additional behind the scenes talking about the development of the game and going more into depth about the actual story of the court of owls uh, which is pretty cool they kind of mentioned stuff like how they expanded and went more in detail of certain parts of that storyline for the actual game itself and again same thing let the suicide squad no official release date but a 2022 release year but at least with this game we did get actual gameplay already so at least you know this game is probably has a good chance of dropping next year but we'll have to see jumping into the final one uh that is going to be demon slayer hinakami chronicles has review scores in fact we did our own review so go check that out on the actual 59 gaming direct channel but again i'm getting this from twitter and uh basically they had the following scores for the game dual shockers gave it an 85 the games machine gave it a 70 Vandal gave it a 70, and then Multiplayer It gave it a 65, with the overall Metacritic score of 72. Now, I haven't played the game, but it does look very beautiful. In fact, it's so similar to the Storm series that the game itself, to me, from what I've seen, seems like a very direct copy-paste of the, of the Naruto games. Same thing for the Demon Slayer. Like, even the menu UI, a lot of it even like the i mean i get it same developers and everything but it looks like it's just the same thing just you know they sprinkle demon slayer instead of naruto uh but either way give me your thoughts about the game it still looks good i still love the naruto games when uh they were really popular at the time and so this game looks beautiful i definitely want to give it a shot but let us know down below uh your thoughts about the game did you pick it up how do you feel about it I'm curious though how close does it look like to the storm series uh your thoughts about it i want to hear about it in the comment section down below and guys Finally, to end with a game to look for next week that releases, and that's the Dark Pictures Anthology House of Ashes for the PlayStation 5, the Series X, the S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC. That's October 21st. A little bit of a horror game just because, you know, we're getting close to Halloween time, and so it's the time of spooky. So, again, check out that game for next week. That's pretty much it. Again, I am Lethal One Up, and guys, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are brand new, and go check out those past videos that I mentioned on the 5.9 Gaming Direct channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.